Welcome to the Risk Meter Show, where we break down the level of risk that certain players have heading into the remainder of the year. We're entering week four. Where does Gibson rank on the risk meter? And what about AJ Brown now that he's banged up? Where does he rank on the risk meter? Is he at 10? What about Stefan Diggs? Where are we ranking him on the meter of risk? Is he a no-brainer trade for now before he explodes from week four on? Or do some of you really think this guy's full of a bunch of risk? We're gonna break down all of these names, some of the biggest names in fantasy football heading into week four. Players that feel like currently they have a ton of risk to their name. We're breaking it all down right now. The Fantasy Football Show begins now. This is the Fantasy Football Show with your host, Smitty. Top five running back. You're watching the Fantasy Football Show. I'm Smitty. <laughs> Boy, oh boy, did I fill my screen up with names. Let's break them down, and let's start off with Mike Williams. Why? Because I think now, before week four kicks off, you're going to make a mistake if you don't trade this guy really high. Now, you're probably going to say, Smitty, I drafted him in the eighth round, Smitty. How is he risky? Risk comes in many forms. It doesn't just come down to like, hey, what's the likelihood of Mike Williams getting hurt? And he could get hurt. He's been hurt in the past. He's had a tough time staying healthy and being consistent. In his defense, he hasn't had Herbert feeding him the football. But the risk with Mike Williams is a little more subtle because you are leaving a lot of trade power, a lot of buying power, a lot of potential to buy low on players that are struggling like Ridley, DK, Diggs. The ability to cash in on this this chip right here that you've been gifted by your your amazing knowledge of drafting mike williams let's let's give a round of applause for everybody who drafted the man you deserve kudos for doing that but you also have to use the the logic the likelihood of this man continuing to play at this level when he's had so much opportunity to do so it's not slim to none but it's a very very low percentage that he continues to drop like near top five wide receiver numbers number one keenan allen is still doing well number two mike williams has an injury history number three a disappointment factor to his name a history of disappointing and we're dealing with three weeks of football people are extrapolating three weeks across 17 games and you can't do that wisely with players with no track record strike that players with a long track record of not doing enough when you expect a lot if anything his track record goes against him and to use three weeks of data to try and paint a picture about where mike williams is going to be four weeks from now if i'm wrong big deal you know why because you're trading into a safer vehicle you're trading into a ridley a dk a digs what i'm asking you to do is sell high buy low and if I'm wrong, it still works out. If I'm right and you hang on to Mike Williams, you're going to regret not buying low and trading Mike Williams out for much better options. You can do a two for two. You can do a two for one. You can do a one for two. There are so many ways to trade Mike Williams. Across position, go get a Gibson or a JT. Give up a little more, a Cordero Patterson, a Mike Davis, whatever, with Mike Williams to get Gibson, to get JT. Get creative. If you put together a package deal with Mike Williams and a running back that has some question, the additive factor of, of Mike Williams to the equation makes somebody think bigger of the other player involved. You like Mike Davis a little bit better psychologically if Mike Williams is involved. One for one, someone might go, I don't want Mike Davis. But you give them Mike Williams and Mike Davis for one better player, and they go, well, I got two possibilities here. Mike Davis could be good. It, it lays off risk, and it psychologically makes somebody want to do a deal because there's two possibilities, two outcomes in their mind. I got two potential opportunities here, Mike Davis and Mike Williams. Cordero Patterson and Mike Williams. Maybe I do want to do this trade. The risk involved for me in not getting rid of Mike Williams is the lost opportunity. And for that reason, my risk meter for his drop-off, for your regret to not trade him before week four or week five, let's say he does well in week four again. Same stuff applies. It's four weeks of football. You can't extrapolate four weeks of football with a guy like Mike Williams who has a proven track record to not be there at this level all year long. Your risk level for Mike Williams to drop off feels, I'm gonna say seven or eight. Doesn't mean I don't like him. It doesn't mean if you hold him and you can't sell him high that I think you got to just, oh my God, get rid of him. You don't bench him. He's a must start right now. But seven to eight, 
if you hold on to them, the risk level is there to drop off and completely disappoint. And, and the risk is more about you not capitalizing on the opportunity you have right in front of you that you might ignore and later regret. As of right now, we're talking Friday evening, Dalvin Cook looks more likely to play than, than not play in week four. If he plays, I mean, the risk level may even be higher on the year because this guy can't stay healthy. He looked out for the year, out for the season twice in week two. Two different injuries, and he came back on the field. I think in general, even if he plays, his risk level is like a seven or eight to get hurt again. He's a walking injury. I love Dalvin Cook. He's in the intro video of every video I do because he was my probably one of my biggest bull predictions that I made back in 2018. I love owning Dalvin Cook and Madison. If you have both, you're probably pretty safe. The risk of, of owning the duo is, is a lot further down the, the meter. But in general, talking about just Dalvin Cook, I really believe his risk is like seven, eight minimum. What do you do with that? Do you trade him? I trade him if I can. I trade him for two players if I can, if I need to make a trade. If I'm one and two and I feel like in a couple weeks I'll be one and four, you're doing self-reflection. You're looking at your team and you're like, I, I need to make a move. Getting a Diggs and a Gibson now, getting a Diggs and a, a JT now might not be an opportunity that's there coming out of week four or five. If you own Madison and Cook, my advice is to stand down. That advice is for people that just own Dalvin Cook, which is a problem you shouldn't have given how much I've, I've hammered that home all offseason long. You draft Madison. He's a must grab for Cook owners. And for all of you Madison owners out there, the fact that I'm talking about the level of risk for Cook being this high, you better not trade Madison low. What a lot of owners do is they come out of the high of having this player like Madison blow up. And then when the ride looks like it's about to come to an end, they want to cut bait for like some low value for whatever ever reason hold madison for the same reason you drafted him just because cook's coming back doesn't mean that disaster can't be down the way not to mention cook could still sit out last minute madison could get run madison could start we'll know more during warm-ups we won't even know fully probably until kickoff and don't give them to the cook owner for nothing i still this moment moving forward if cook comes back i still think madison is a sleeping giant win elite player on your bench so hold on to him Clyde's got a high risk level. Let's be honest. He's right around the, the seven to eight range. I still like him. His upside is still huge. Because the upside is huge, this level of risk you see right up here is not weighing down the scale heavily on the risk side. It's, it's kind of in the middle. He's teeter-tottering in the middle of high risk and high reward. One fumble and he could be on the bench. One big touchdown run. Maybe coming off the confidence he built up by punching in a touchdown in week three could have him vault into everybody's top 10 running backs. I like Clyde right now at the value because people are still very worried about him. And for that reason, I'm all I'm all in at the value, the cost of entry. Boy, oh boy, did, did Zeke Elliott ever go from a 10 to a three overnight? People were freaking out about Elliott after the first week of football. To be honest, I mean, if you've got Pollard, Zeke's very low risk. If you don't have Pollard, there's moderate risk, but I still like Zeke a lot. But like with Madison, I screamed from the rooftops, you have to reach around early to get your cuff. Madison around early. Pollard around early. Chuba Hubbard, we'll go over that in a minute. Around or too early, you have to grab these super handcuffs if you own the starter at least one round early every year. If you didn't, Take a lap, take, take a lap. My risk is low on Zeke right now. I like him a lot. Barkley's got high risk. I don't care how good he looked on his touchdown dive. He's limited all week long, probably will be all year for a reason. There's a reason he's limited during practice because his knee's going to swell up. You're asking a lot of, of the knee joint to literally be barely able to go out there in week one, barely test live reps against that knee, and then take massive running back one volume think about that for one second you're not even sure if your knee's ready Barkley's a little bit behind schedule running backs have torn their ACL way later in the season prior to coming back and and they look more ready than Barkley did and I know they're being cautious with them look I know all the Barkley supporters and owners are going to defend them that's your running back I get it but when you break it down and really truly think about it your knee is barely ready you're not even sure if you're going to be ready for week one. You go out and test live reps with pads, but not even taking hits weeks before week one. Then all of a sudden you got 300 pound linemen driving you into the ground over and over and over. His knee's going to be limited every week in practice. He's an injury prone guy. You can argue that if you want, but he almost broke his elbow the, the play before he tore his ACL last year. He looked out for the year, the play before he tore his ACL. He's got a lot of torque on those ligaments. His thighs are so strong, his cutting 
force is so great. No matter how big your quads get and the torque is, when you cut and bend your ligaments inside your knee, they do not grow or get bigger. So when you already have concerns of, of tearing things and being injury prone, and you have the force and torque that this man runs with, I'm telling you, he's at high risk for re-injury. He's at high risk for a hamstring injury. The threat of a hamstring injury usually does come along with the, the, the first year back from an ACL tear. Achilles groin re-injuring of the knee or the other ACL. I'm just telling you right now, if I own Barkley and I could get a ton for him right now and people are getting excited about him, I would, I would cash him in, especially if he does well in this game. His risk level is easily above seven. Henry's gonna probably blow up this week. If he doesn't, people are gonna be worried because there are no wide receivers available for Sunday's game. Julio and AJ Brown are out. They're going to run the ball. They play the New York football Jets, man. Henry should have like 400 yards and 15 TDs on Sunday. On Sunday, he has no risk, but the man is taking abuse and it's gonna pile up. It's a long season. Coming off of his monster week four outing, I would look to trade him because his risk level feels in the eight to 10 range after week four, coming out of week four. But Smitty, are you saying he's gonna do bad this weekend and I can come back into your comments and say, ha, LOL, Henry, a cell, you moron. If you want, I can't control what you do, Bob. But I'm telling you right now, Henry's gonna blow up in week four, one way or the other. Coming out of week four, Bob, I'm looking to sell him because I, I feel like he's going to break down at some point during the year. He's being overworked. This guy's gonna have over a thousand total carries within just like a two and a half year time frame. the way they're feeding him. Not talking about everything in his past. I'm talking about just last year, the year before, and half of this year. He will have over 1,000 carries in that short time frame. To put that into perspective, Zeke Elliott has 1,500 total carries on his career. Henry's gonna have 1,000 within two and a half years. At his size, his frame, getting hit at the legs because no one wants to tackle this man upstairs. He's gonna suffer some sort of, of injury in my opinion. The odds are with me on that. I'm not saying there isn't a chance. I'm not saying that at week 17, I can't go, well, I was a year early and then we watch him drop off in week four of next year. I'm not saying there's not a percentage chance. I'm saying the percentage chance is low that he makes it through week 17 at this volume without getting hurt or looking like he's running in mud and breaking down. Give him a 15%, 20% chance of making it through the season by week 17's end at this volume and success rate. That's still a 20% chance. I'm telling you, I, I have a 20% chance of being too early. I'm I'm admitting that right now. But if you're playing the odds game, that's not a, a, a great bet. And for that reason, I'm selling after week four when he gains even more value than he has right now. Lock it. Lock it like Mike Williams is gonna fall from grace a little bit. I'm not saying he will disappear entirely, but there's no way he's gonna sustain the value he has now, which is more than DK. I, I trade Lockett for DK straight up in a heartbeat. So the risk level isn't so much about getting hurt and falling off the map. It's about not taking advantage of the opportunity. If you don't trade him now, your risk level of having a guy that's much lower in value is gonna be in this range right here. Chris Carson. He looks pretty solid right now, but the volume, is it there? 12 carries last week, 13 the week prior. He's very efficient with the work he's getting, but that's not a lot of work. And I think trading him at his current value is pretty good. With all the running backs struggling right now, he's got really good trade value. And I think if you don't cash in on that, you're gonna be pretty upset at yourself. I think at his current expectation level, he has a pretty high likelihood of disappointing. I'll put him right here. I like Gibson. The risk meter is pretty high on him. But even if we put him right in the middle, he may not get the work. He may not get the touchdowns, but you can get him for a wide receiver two right now in trade. I really like Gibson moving forward. I'm all about trading for him at a buy low value right now. I'm willing to take the risk because I'm trading for him nowhere near his draft value. His draft value puts him like at a 10 or a nine. Trading into him right now, it's like a four or five, maybe less. Panic for Monty, panic for A-Rob. I'm gonna put them at like a, an eight or a nine in terms of them delivering on the value you paid or the value you're holding them to. It's a mess there in Chicago. I trust Nagy zero, negative, minus a hundred out of a hundred. He's play calling. We knew this was gonna be a disaster. Play calling is not his strong suit. Get Monty in the, the nine, maybe the nine or 10 right now. Same with A-Rob, eight, nine. AJB, look, 
We don't know if he's out one or two weeks or out five. He put out an Instagram uh, post the other day. It said, God makes no mistakes. He does everything for a reason. I, I love the message. I agree with him. But you got to wonder why he put that out. I might be getting a little bit too detective-like here. But for me, I can't imagine a player posting that on something where they're week to week like hey you might be out a week you know you're working to get back you're not thinking like oh everything happens for a reason again great message but that worries me that we could be looking at something where we're not being told the entire truth and a week from now we find out it's a three to four week injury so the risk level is around eight or nine i still like him i still buy low at the right price but holding him as a wide receiver one right now if you can get rid of him trade into an a b and a running back trade into a a Diggs or a Ridley by giving up a little bit more. You have to give up more. You can't trade an injured AJ Brown for Diggs, an injured AJ Brown for Ridley, an injured AJ Brown for DK, but you can trade an injured AJ Brown with a player that you don't necessarily love that's playing well. You can do that and then get into a situation where you have no headache. So look to do that now because this feels like it could be seven, eight, nine in terms of the, the risk meter, but at the same time, still a good buy low. I know I'm confused too. Christian McCaffrey is a big risk right now. He could be out two to three to four more weeks. We don't know. The, the Panthers are three and oh. Much could depend on how they look, whether they want to push them. They're four and one. They're going to be like, look, we got a good schedule. Lines up perfectly to let McCaffrey rest. It depends how good Chuba Hubbard looks and fills in this week. If they feel like Chuba is going to keep him going, They'll rest him. The very last thing the Panthers want is to run into the same thing last year. They bring him back too early and he hits IR. So don't be shocked if he misses more like three to four weeks, but it still could be two to three. Either way, if you're holding him, you don't have Chuba, risk levels eight, nine. If you don't trade him now for two players like Diggs and Gibson, JT and DK, which you can kind of do right now because there's no indication he's out longer than two to three weeks. If news breaks next week that he's out three to four weeks, you won't get a JT and a Diggs. You, you won't even get a Clyde and a Diggs later. So for that reason, the level is really high in terms of the risk meter because right now you can trade them four because right now you can trade them four two players that can really, really help you win. Now, if you have Chuba Hubbard, maybe pump the brakes and say, okay, the risk meter is a little lower, but then you got to ask yourself, well, what about if I kept Chuba Hubbard, probably not going to pull off many trades where you send McCaffrey for two players without giving that player Chuba Hubbard. But I'm just saying, if you're creative, if you're crafty, if you can maneuver that, e even with the, the risk being low owning the duo, if you can keep Chuba Hubbard and trade him away, then you're actually uh, you're actually getting the best of uh, both worlds at that point. Mixon got hurt in week four on Thursday night. He's had a huge risk level for me all year long, which is why I avoided him pretty much in every draft he always looks good but he always disappoints for me Mixon feels right around eight nine ten for me and i don't know that you can trade him right now hurt you almost got to ride it out but certainly try i heard it non-stop after week one schmitty i told you that and this is after lamb blew up okay amari blew up too but lamb literally just dropped loads all over the field and i heard nothing but I told you Amari's the number one, Smitty. I told you about this. As if I could be put in my place coming off of a week one outing where Lamb blows up. Amari has been known to disappoint, and I think that if you're holding him right now, you try and trade him if you can, but you don't trade him low. But he certainly has like a seven in terms of risk of getting hurt or disappointing but make sure you don't sell low but I, i'm certainly worried about him at the level of expectation everybody had coming out of week one it's lamb's team lamb to me people are freaking out about him right now what do we this is what i'm hearing all week what do we do with cd lamb smitty i don't even know how people can construct that question what do we do with cd lamb you start him he's a wide receiver one in fantasy his risk level is probably like two or one what do we do with CD Lamb? What do we do with Roberto Trees? I don't know. My thinking is this. You, you didn't draft him really, really high, right? You shouldn't have. So his risk is really kind of not high. You may not be happy with him, but he's not running the risk of, of ruining your team or your season. 
you could sell him off and then if he goes nuts you're gonna be like why did i do that i'm not saying cooper cup and him will swap like they have in the past where cup would have a good half of a year then woods would take over it's a different situation stafford loves cooper cup cooper cup's gonna be a top five to ten wide receiver although i trade cooper cup high if i can not because i don't believe in him but because i think you could get a lot for him right now buy a low on other players that could be near his value get ridley get Diggs, get something and ridley trade a two for one trade a a lesser player like a Cordero Patterson trade trade somebody like a Damian Harris coming off maybe a big week in week four because White is out for the year they may lean on Damian Harris but they could take away and give to Stevenson I worry about that New England situation being consistent at running back they remind me so much of San Fran and we're talking about Cooper Cup here trade Cooper Cup and maybe a Damian Harris coming off a big week four and if Diggs or Ridley or DK struggle in week four again you buy that player and maybe you get some kind of upgrade over damian harris like a jt maybe jt struggles again maybe you can trade damian harris and cooper cup for whichever wide receiver out of dk ridley or dig struggles again in week four if that owner let's say owned jt that's the kind of trade i'm talking about with cooper cup that's the kind of trade that if if you say, hey, I don't trade Cooper Cup at his high top five, top one to five wide receiver value, that's stubborn. That's being stubborn. Make a good manager decision for your team. And if you can sell Cooper Cup big, do it. If you can't, hold him. Swift is always banged up. He's got a high risk, but high reward. I would say Swift, if you're holding him, expecting him to be a running back, you know, four, five, six, seven overall, you're holding an eight to nine risk level. If you bought him low, that his risk is low. But I think not trading him at top five running back value, if you can right now, like if you can trade Swift for a Gibson and Ridley and give up something smaller back, like I've talked about over and over. So a good two for two where you're downgrading into Gibson or JT using DeAndre Swift, but upgrading a lesser wide receiver into a Ridley or a Diggs or a DK, you're running the risk of, of holding a guy that has a ton of value and later on you're going to regret not trading him. His risk is pretty high. His upside's huge. If you hold him when you can trade him high, you're going to be upset at yourself later. He really does feel like a big injury risk to me still, but he's playing great. I admit it. He's playing absolutely phenomenal, but we are three weeks into football and he's already struggling to stay healthy. Don't sell him low. I'm not saying that. Smitty, how can you not like Swift? I like Swift. I repeat, I like Swift. I'll say it one more time. Don't sell low. But entertain selling high. Same thing with Nick Chubb. If you can sell him at a top five running back value, that's good. That's very smart. The same thing I said, trading Chubb for JT as a downgrade or Gibson as a downgrade and getting a Ridley or somebody for a Cooks. Amazing things. Trade a Lockett and Chubb for a Hopkins and JT. For a Hopkins and Gibson, I would do that. If you don't, you're running the risk of, of being disappointed given his risk level is pretty high for injury and because the backfield is not his alone so there's no confusion i'll put a d there he's got a real high risk of of losing the job to a committee so if he has a big week four which he could have because again white is out for the year they might lean on him a lot this week but then then stevenson the rookie might get more work later pick him up in deeper leagues and hold stevenson on your bench high high level of risk don't hold on to him after week four if you can get a lot do a package deal too if harris comes out of week four looking good you can trade him in a cooks or him in a wide receiver that's doing well for a struggling top five or six wide receiver i see it all the time and lastly stefan diggs to me this man has a, a one or two level of risk only because he's not doing what he should be doing past that i think with josh allen looking to form and dig still catching a td through three weeks i'm not i'm not alarmed at all i'm buying low and if you aren't buying low on this guy you're gonna live to regret it stefan Diggs has no risk to me there you have it join me every tuesday and thursday 5 to 7 p.m eastern here on the fantasy football show i've got exciting news look at this right here Your man Smitty in the Fantasy Football Show is dropping video pods moving forward sometime in late October. Get ready. We're one of a very few amount of shows selected to do video podcasting go forward on Spotify. Once the transition happens, that means every show I drop on Spotify will be a video and audio pod depending on how you want to consume it. Spread the word that we're coming to Spotify video style, baby. Let's be the face of Spotify fantasy football video. Let's go.
darn excited about this Spotify thing, guys. Go now. I've listed as the first link below in the description. Go follow me on Spotify. Get in there early. Make sure you're following. And let's build the community up from the ground up. Let's take over Spotify video from the fantasy football perspective. And I'm so pumped to be a part of the video podcasting platform that is so rare to, to get a seat at the table for this. So I, I'm, I'm just ecstatic. Order my tech service at heysmitty.com. I've got a work phone I carry around with me. I've got my personal phone. I've got my work phone. I literally am texting with my followers all day long. And you and I can start talking about trade ideas and all that. Go to heysmitty.com. And get on over to sleeperu.com. That's where all my rankings are, my bolt predictions. Sleeperu.com, like a university. Sleeperu.com. Now let's go week four and join me. Here's my live stream schedule. I am live every single Friday and Saturday night. Every Tuesday and Thursday, I'm live from 5 to 7 p.m. Eastern here on the channel, the YouTube channel. And I'm live on Instagram the entire one hour leading into kickoff on Sunday morning, The Fantasy Football Show. Go follow me there. And that's where you leave the voice messages for the Tuesday and Thursday show where we do the voicemail segments. So get over to Instagram and follow me at The Fantasy Football Show. Later. This is the Fantasy Football Show with your host, Smitty. Top five running back. You're watching the Fantasy Football Show. I'm Smitty. Take a look.